you, Joe, for everything. We love you. <laughs> so, good morning. <laughs> it's uh, good to be back after two weeks of sitting around waiting to see what was going to happen, but um, everything is fine, and we're back, and um, glad to be back this morning. So, um, we want to wish all of you a happy um, 2021, since I haven't had an opportunity to do that yet, and um, we'll pray for a good year. Uh, we have just a couple of announcements this morning. The first is that um, the trustees will be meeting this Tuesday night. Uh, it'll be a virtual meeting on Zoom, and so if you're a trustee, you'll receive a link. Uh, 7.30 Tuesday night, uh, we will be electing officers, organizing for the year, and then doing any business that, that needs to be done. I also remind uh, the youth that there will be a Zoom meeting on January 31st at 7 o'clock. And so I hope that you'll be able to, to join us for that. Um, to touch base, kind of talk about where do we go moving forward and, and things like that. And then uh, the Staff Parish Relations Committee will be meeting via Zoom, uh, or not Zoom, um, uh, one, of the, one of the platforms, Microsoft groups or something. Anyway, you'll get a link if you're an SPRC uh, for more, and uh, it will be Thursday, January 28th at 7 o'clock. Um, so if you're a part of SPRC, please uh, join us for that. Um, those are the only announcements that I have this morning, um, other than to say that at the 9.30 service, uh, we will be um, broadcasting on, on FM in the parking lot, so um, if you would like to drive and, and be here for that, um, if you want to do both services, one at home, one here, you can do that, um, but just know that that's available, and um, we'll have a word of prayer together. Gracious God, we thank you for this time that we have together, a time of worship, a time of prayer, a time of listening and, and learning from your word. And so this morning we ask that you would help us to be humble, may our hearts be open, and help us to be vulnerable. And we ask that you would transform our lives, that we would live lives in line with your word. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm glad to be able to be here live with the audience as they lead us in worship. And uh, I know that uh, you'll appreciate uh, the offering of praise that they have for us this morning. Good morning again. Please prepare to open your hearts to let the Spirit fill you. We're going to do a song called Come Now is the Time to Worship.
choose you because you are trustworthy and true. You are our teacher, and your understanding and wisdom is beyond all we can imagine. You promise wisdom to us when we ask. You are the way, the truth, and the life. So for our prayer uh, concerns this morning, and uh, if you have any, would, would you like to put, put, put them in the comment section, please do. Um, we will be, uh, we can have, Joe will be watching them and we can get that updated. Um, but we do have some that we want to lift up. First, um, we um, ask for prayer for Tom and Lorraine Beckett. Um, they are both doing well. Um, better health-wise, they've recovered, and they will be traveling on Tuesday to uh, Florida um, to um, settle things with Mark's apartment and um, and take care of business um, down there. And so please keep Tom and Lorraine in prayers as they travel um, for safe safety and um, also to be with them as they um, face a difficult task in, in dealing with um, going through things down in Florida as they um, settle uh, things with Mark. We also um, have an update on Karen Dickel's brother, Bland. He was released from the hospital and he's recuperating at home. And so they, they're very thankful for all the prayers and uh, concerns uh, that you shared. Um, Evelyn Kraft, uh, the um, wife of Carl Kraft, the previous pastor, um, if you're friends with him on Facebook and, and 
their children on Facebook, you probably are aware of this, but um, Evelyn had some, some balance difficulty and was admitted to the hospital um, where they thought she had had a stroke, but then they determined that it may not have been, it, it may have been a mini stroke, but uh, regardless, she'll be um, doing some therapy to regain her balance and strength. So please keep Evelyn um, and the Kraft family in your prayers. Um, Nancy Overton's friend's mom, March, uh, was in the hospital with um, pneumonia, COVID, COVID related pneumonia, um, and she is improving. And so um, that's certainly continue to keep uh, Marge in prayers, but good news for that. And then Rebecca Hickman asked for prayers for um, her psychology professor um, in college who has been diagnosed with lung cancer um, after persistent year long cough. And so we want to lift up. Um, Rebecca's professor. Um, also, I, I meant to do this during the announcements, I guess, um, but this is a praise. Um, as you know, we did not um, carol at Inspira Hospital this year because of obvious reasons. Um, and so we were trying to figure out how could we help still you know, share God's love and bring some joy and, and hope to folks who were there at the hospital. And so we talked about the possibility of bagels and, and things like that, um, a bagel tray, and, and looking at the details, it wasn't possible to do that because the um, because of in the, you know, all the requirements of individually wrapped things and, and all those kinds of things. So um, in conversation with the hospital, it was determined that the best that we think to do would be to offer a gift, and I think I've shared this with you, um, to their Inspira COVID Relief Fund, which is a fund that, that helps uh, boost morale as well as um, um, offers relief for, for whatever needs there may be related to, to the pandemic um, for employees and those who are part of the hospital. And so um, I just wanted to let you know that the, the check has been sent and um, the amount that we collected uh, that we thought was going to be for bagels, but instead is going to reach out and, and share with the staff in this way, um, was $530. So thank you for uh, your generous gifts that allowed us to share that um, this year, not with teddy bears and song, but with, with um, financial support for those who may be uh, in need. Um, those are the requests that I have. Anything new coming in? Okay. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi, Jim. <laughs> Good to be seen. <laughs> uh, let's pray together. <clears throat> Gracious God, we thank you for um, this opportunity that we have to, to just be in your presence this morning. We thank you for, again, the, the newness of this year and for all of the opportunities that, that we'll find as we move forward and move through the days ahead. We continue to pray, oh God, for uh, larger requests uh, that, that we've been lifting up for those who are struggling with, with the COVID virus and and, and the illness that, that's associated with that, and um, families who have, have lost loved ones, we just we just pray for um, we, we pray for for healing, for help, for strength, for um, for better days ahead. As as we now um, have the vaccine, and we just ask that that would go smoothly as as folks uh, receive that. We pray too for our country. Uh, we especially in these days coming up, the inauguration and the, the change in, in leadership. We pray for peace. We pray for, for guidance and for open, open ears and hearts and minds of those who lead us, regardless of which side they're on. We ask that you would um, allow your spirit to be heard, as Joyce reminded us of, of that import, importance last week. We pray for more specific things, too, as we, as we pray this morning. We pray for, um, for those who are, are recovering from illness or uh, dealing with, with new illnesses. We ask that you would strengthen all of them and again, uh, provide healing for them. We lift up particularly this morning, Evelyn, um, as she will be doing therapy for, um, to recover from this, the mini stroke. We ask for strength for her and, and for her family. We pray for Tom and Lorraine, too, especially this morning, as they'll be traveling to Florida. We pray for, for safety on the road, as, as well as um, just to give them a sense of your peace and comfort as they 
do what needs to be done as they deal with uh, their child's um, property and, and things that they will need to do in Florida. We ask again that you would um, just again be with all of us now as we, as we continue to worship this morning. We ask that you would um, again speak to our hearts and as we begin this new uh, series on what it means to be um, people of courage, um, we ask that you would, would help us to live into who you call us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so that being said, that we're going to be starting a new series this morning on um, courage, um, I have a question, and, and so this is an easy question, since, you know, again, I've been accused of asking those you know, hard questions and, and kind of dropping them and saying, okay, um, what do you think, and not giving people really time to think about them. This is an easy one. Um, who is, or what is a courageous character in a movie that you've admired? And um, what is it about that person that, that you admire? That what? That you admire. So a courageous admire, person okay. on, in TV or um, movies or maybe in a book or, you know, wherever. Just some, somebody that you've admired because of courage. Harry Potter. <laughs> okay. So what about, what about Harry Potter that... Um, well, he, he had to face so much, so little from the time he was born up until the big war, you know, and, and he had to face evil all on his own, basically. Okay. Even though he had some help, and he had to find the courage to ask for help at the end. But, um, yeah, I mean, he had to pretty much save the whole wizarding world okay. <laughs> all on his own. <laughs> that takes a lot of courage. Okay. <laughs> So, so Harry Potter just facing evil and, and yes. um, sometimes on his own had no one to ask for help. Um, yes. To add some, some wisdom. Um, did anybody else? Kurt? Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about Luke Skywalker? That, well, for all the same reasons. He you know, was just a kid and he had to face uh, evil and adversity. and he, he wasn't on his own, but you know, he... Uh, uh, seemed to be the, aside from Leia, the bravest of uh, all the people in the in the epilogue, or whatever you call it, you know. So, okay. Uh, Rocky. This guy's Mr. Rocky. Rocky. Just a, just a true believer to the whole movie, to the whole series. <laughs> okay. Just a trust and believe. Okay, trust and believe, and and. Um, Anything coming in, Joe, from anybody watching? <laughs> Amy Stanton said uh, Wonder Woman. Um, I guess she and she put the uh, the muscle sign out there, so I assume that the strength that indicates the strength. Okay. Of, of Wonder Woman. Love Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is a good one. I, I um, Indiana Jones for me. Even even to the point when I was there, um, when I was in at, at Disney um, or Universal. Um, uh, Gosh, I guess that was when I was in in Linwood. I mean, we're back. That was what eight, ninety or eighty eight to ninety five. So we went down to the Boy Scouts, and I bought an Indiana Jones hat um, <laughs> just because you know what you know just that you, you know, in the movie you see that shadow, you know it was him. But you know you fought Nazis and snakes and yeah you know, all those things, and just being being brave enough to um, and wise enough to know what to do. Um, so so those are some. Um, all good things um, that, that we have in, in people that have shown courage and what it means to be courageous. So what we're going to be doing um, over the next couple, four weeks actually, um, leading up to the Sunday before Lent starts. Oh, and by the way, let me just mention, um, I should have done this during the announcements as well, since I'm mentioning Lent, um, kind of aside before I read the scripture here. Um, our hope is that we'll be able to uh, regather, begin to regather for worship on the first Sunday of Lent, which is February 21st. That's our, our goal. Um, church Council will be watching um, numbers, and, and if it's safe, that, that is our hope. And so um, I've had a number of people ask me, so when are we going to you know, be back together in person? And I just wanted to let you know that that's kind of what we're targeting and hoping for. Um, that will give the vaccine some time to, um, to, to begin to, to kick in and, and hopefully begin to, to push the numbers down so that we can be safe enough to, to be together. 
Um, I know all of you miss being together, um, and certainly as we, we think about what we've had to face in this, the courage has been a part of this because it's all new. It's been new to all of us as we've tried to figure out the best way to, to, to get through this this thing together. So um, I just wanted to let you know that, and the church council will be talking about that at our, our February meeting, and, and hopefully uh, by then we'll have some good good um, information to be able to, to do that. So um, our scripture this morning is Philippians 2, 5 through 11. So as we think about um, courage, here are these words um, from Paul. This is, um, actually, th this is a um, early hymn. It, it was a, this is a hymn of, uh, of praise um, that was believed to be used during worship. Um, and, and Paul uses these words in this letter that he writes to the people of Philippi. He says, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Give thanks be to God. So as we hear those words, um, we're, we're thinking about being, being courageous and um, this, this first week, as we, we look, about, look at, at who Jesus is and, and how he displayed courage, um, we see courage in um, vulnerability. And that's not typically where we, we see courage. Although Maria kind of um, hinted at it when, when she was talking about Harry Potter in terms of knowing when to ask for help, knowing that he couldn't do it on his own, um, that kind of opening oneself to say, hey, you know, there's some things I can do, but I, I can't do everything. I can't do it all. And so, and so that's the, we begin to see vulnerability and, and the courage to know how to do that. Um, but as we look at this passage, um, who is Jesus according to this passage? Well, um, it says that, that he was um, in the form of God. And so, you know, this lifts up the fact that that Jesus was God, that Jesus um, was fully, fully divine, um, and yet he came in human form, and so we have this, this incarnation, this is the very beginning of explanation, understanding of who Jesus is, that it's God who came to us um, in a form that, that we can understand, um, that we can see, that we can um, identify with, and, and then at the same time, he can then identify with us. And so... Um, we had this early explanation of who Jesus was, um, and, and is still, but um, in particular who Jesus was uh, for, for the people who are reading this letter. Um, and Paul says that he didn't consider equality with God, um, he didn't consider that, that the fact that he was God and he was equal with God as something to be grasped. Meaning that um, it wasn't something that that Jesus didn't, as he interacted with people, didn't um, didn't say, "Well, I'm right. You know, this is because I'm God." Like he didn't take that authority. He didn't grasp at it, um, and he didn't always have to have his way. He didn't always have to prove that he was right. Um, there's that humility there that that Paul talks about. He humbled himself, um, and so yeah, again, we see this picture of. Of vulnerability. So as we think about Jesus and how he encountered people, how do we see um, him choosing to use his power and authority? If he didn't grasp it, wanting to be equal to God and, and always be right, how, did, how does Jesus show um, his power and authority? Any, any thoughts on that? Maybe through example, to a certain extent. Okay. You know, gave examples on how to pray, how to, uh, I don't know. 
So don't, don't stand on the corner like the hypocrites and say, you know, beat on your chest and draw attention to yourself when you pray. Go in, in, in private and the, you know, the humility. And so yeah, yeah, the yeah. example of, of example teaching of humility, that. Yeah. Going away to, to himself, going away to pray, find quiet places away from, from the crowd, not, not making a show of it, but winning that time with God. Okay, so by example. Um, how, else, how else do we see Jesus using his power and authority? Okay, healing, healing others, um, using the power to help others, to, to lift up others, not not elevate himself. I mean, it, it it kind of in some ways it did because you know people who saw that were like, wow, you know, but that wasn't the purpose. The purpose was always to help someone who who needed to be lifted up. Okay, standing up, standing up to the Pharisees, using. Using the authority to, to point out um, when when something is wrong or the, the, there's an injustice or when, when someone is being mistreated. So using the authority to, to do that. Um, so again, um, you know, wanting people to, to to understand who God is and that, that God you know cares more about about people than than rules. Um, anything else? Basically, all those illustrations I, I, um, are, you know, illustrations of vulnerable service to others. Um, um, it, there's a vulnerability in, in reaching out to help others, those who are in need. He took risk, you know, when you, we, we think about healing, we think about Jesus, um, the risk, he would heal a leper. He would interact with people who were considered unclean, who, who wouldn't, um, ordinarily the, the world wouldn't have anything to do with or where people were afraid of them, and, and Jesus didn't fear that. He said, you know, um, I, I'm, going, I'm here to help, I'm here to heal. And so he uses his power and authority um, in, in vulnerability, in, in showing who he is, in demonstrating who God is, and also in service to others. Um, certainly, you know, as we think about um, whose birthday we're celebrating this weekend, Martin Luther King, um, there's this, uh, as we look at his life, we see that kind of a good illustration of that vulnerability, that you know, peaceful, um, being peaceful, not grasping at power, not grasping at authority, but but peacefully trying to make a point. Um, you know, Martin Luther King did that, and and so uh, again, that's another illustration of of how uh, of what this vulnerable, this idea of vulnerability and, and service to others through service to others. Um, One of the things that that you know we think about when you know that, that Paul doesn't mention here in this passage is that um, he says he was in the form of God, but didn't regard equality with God as something to be exploited, um, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, a servant, um, being born in human likeness, and and found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient. Um, that's what he did, and that was a choice that, that Jesus made. He he emptied himself. Um, he gave of himself. And so did, have you ever thought you know, what, what the opposite of that is? Um, he could have very easily come as a demanding king, saying, you will worship me. You will bow down to me. I'm God. You know, but he didn't do that. So why does that matter, that he didn't come with that kind of authority and power? I think that it's, as far as me, right. I'm speaking only for myself. Sure. If someone was that aggressive, <laughs> I'd be scared, and I probably wouldn't um, be fully into it. If that makes sense. Okay. You know, I'm kind of. I'm only doing it because I'm scared, and I'm doing it because you're yelling at me. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Instead of you know, um, me going to you, or me praying like you know, a as a as a humble servant, you know. Right. So, uh, please, to please, to please, basically. So forcing, <laughs> forcing, if he had come in as a demanding king and forced himself on us, it's that's a whole different thing than than showing humility and and being willing grace. to yeah, to because himself, okay? you, you kind of just feel a little more um, comfortable and more secure. I mean, I I always felt like, you know, when when I'm yelled at, I basically. I get scared and I get nervous and I don't do things right. <laughs> and I'm only doing it because I'm getting yelled at. 
you know, I don't really want to do it. Right. You're okay. not you're not making me want to do it. You're just making me do it. So does that does that make sense? That's just for my yeah. Job. Sure. <laughs> and, and I think too is that, that the attitude that Jesus had attracted seekers, those who were you know seeking something or seeking more than the Pharisees had to offer. Okay. So people were looking for for something other than you have to do it this way. That, you know, the kind of that, that force for us. Uh, Amy Stanton says he was giving us an example of how to interact with others. Ooh. Okay. Um, Wait, what? Uh, I'm sorry, Amy, Amy, <laughs> so Amy lifted up that, that um, Jesus was giving, giving us an example of how to interact with others. Okay, yeah. Um, I think it has a lot to do with free will as well. I mean, we're not slaves, right? So when we were created, God didn't program or uh, basically, you know, we're not zombies, right? So God wants us to freely love him and not do it out of fear or out of, you know, compulsion, right? It, it's about freely giving yourself over to God. Right, okay. So that the, the idea of, of choice there, um, you know, and I think that's in some ways that that has to do with um, you know if Jesus was in human form, he had that same that same choice that you know he could have he could have chosen to be a demanding king, but instead he didn't. He chose to to show what it means to to love, to empty oneself, to serve others, um, to be vulnerable um, in, in many ways, even to death. Um, he shows that that vulnerability as he was obedient, um, because he could have said to God, "No, you know, no, I'm I'm not going to do this. I don't I, I don't need to do this." But he did. He willingly gave himself, um, even even to death on the cross. Um, and so I think that is why it matters um, that that Jesus gives us that example. Um, the the NRSV says Jesus emptied himself. Um, that's what we read this morning. The um, contemporary English version says um, he gave up everything. He, he gave up everything that he could have claimed and had to become human, to, to interact with us and to, to be with us and to, um, to show us who God is. And so you know, the difference between choosing that and being forced to do it is huge. It was, you know, he could have, um, he, he, he chose that, you know, to... Um, God didn't tell him, you have to do this, but it was a choice of, of love and vulnerability. Um, and that takes courage. Um, so as we think about our own lives, you know, how, how hard is it for us to be vulnerable to people, to, um, to reach out, to serve others, to help others, to lift up others, um, when, when we think our own way is right, where we might want to, want to think our own way is right, and... Um, and kind of close yourself off from others. Um, it's a choice that, that's not an easy one to make, but it's one that, that Jesus demonstrates for us. Um, it's a choice, and you know, both we as individuals and as a church are called to do the same. How do we, how do we as individuals and how do we as a church offer God's love um, to, to all people, to people that, that, that need to know who God is and be able to see who God is um, through what we say and, and what we do? Um, one of the things that you know we don't like in particular about this passage is that it uses the word slave. I mean that sometimes gives us a, a, a negative connotation of what that is. But when you think about what what Paul is saying there is, you know, put yourself in Paul's time. Um, Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of, of of you know the the person who had the least, the person who was considered to be the least, became the least. Um, so that, so that we could, um, so that we could understand what it means to, to fully give of ourselves for others, um, and so whether it's servant or giving up everything, um, that's something that, that's important for us to think about. Um, and then, and then at the end of this passage, um, it says that therefore God, because He was willing to do that, because because he gave himself so fully to us in, in vulnerability that God gave him the name above every name so that at Jesus' name every knee will bow and every tongue confess that, that he's um, 
that he's Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Um, and so, you know, when we do that, when we, um, when we humble ourselves, when we are vulnerable to others, when we can reach out to others who are in need, um, we can set our own stuff aside and, and, and reach out and serve others, we, God lifts us up. Um, you know, think about a time you've served somebody, you've really openly did something for someone, um, what that does to you, it's that, it's a, it's a joy, it's, it's being lifted up, it's, it's being, it's almost, and you don't do it because of that, but you get that, that full feeling of, of, you know, this is what, this is who God's called me to be, and, and so we're, we're lifted up, um, not to the point of Jesus, I don't, don't mean to say that, but, you know, we are lifted up, and it's to give God the glory, because God, you know, when we, when we serve others, when we are vulnerable to others and open our lives to others, um, God's the one who receives the glory because that's who's God, that's who God has called us to be. Um, and so, as we think about that this week, um, in our relationships um, with God, in the relationships with our family and with our friend, and and to the church, the community, and the world, um, how how can we follow that example of Jesus? How can we be vulnerable um, to place ourselves? Um, to put ourselves out there, um, setting aside our own stuff, our own agendas, our own um, need to be powerful, our own need to be in control, and, and do for others. Um, that takes courage. It's not easy to do. But that's a question as we think about that. Um, we'll find that, that we bring glory to God when we can do that and, and be vulnerable and open to others. Um, we'll be looking at, more, at different types of courage uh, for the next three weeks, and uh, we look forward to, to sharing with, with all of you. Um, we'll close with a word of prayer, and then the Eons will lead us in our closing song. Let us pray. Jesus, we come this morning looking to you as a model of, of humility and love. We thank you that you came to willingly give yourself for us, that you willingly emptied who you were, the power that you had, so that you could serve others. And so this morning we ask that you would give us the courage to be vulnerable. In whatever situations we find ourselves, help us to humble ourselves. Help us to be willing to set aside ourselves and, and reach out to share your love with others. And we thank you that only you receive the glory through doing that. And we become the people you've called, us, you've called us to be. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So Ian's will lead us in our closing praise song this morning. Final song is called He Reigns and He Does. <laughs> 